1997, give or take a year or two, I was working out on Fire Island, a Barrier Island, <laughs> uh, off of Long Island, and I worked at this little um, restaurant called El Hot Spot. It was a Mexican restaurant with a generic name, you know, Mexican name. And I was told that I could wear anything I wanted. And in fact, they encouraged me to dress up, be myself. I was wearing church dresses, sort of with hats sometimes, all different kinds of wigs. And, um, I didn't know much about makeup, but I had some girlfriends that started to help me with the makeup and stuff. I was given this creative freedom. I had basically lived as a gay man, and um, Pearl hadn't em emerged yet. And so I was wearing, I just tried to put together things that I could find. They had a lot of, uh, I was wearing, they would have a lot of the old drag queens out on the island would retire and their drag and they would they would put it up at at uh, yard sales and I would go shopping that's where I did my shopping in the beginning because I dare not go to any store to buy women's clothing and so I was uh, getting ready to come into the city and I was gonna go through my whole routine put on my, back into my male clothing and get ready to come back. Simple, I've done it a thousand times. And at that time, I, I couldn't get it together. I couldn't change my clothes and I couldn't get out of my drag to go back into the city. And I felt so schizophrenic. I, I, and I started talking to myself. I said, okay now, Pearl, come on off it. Uh, or I might've even talked to Ken. I said, okay, chop, chop, let's get it together. Let's get on that boat, take off these clothes. And it was like Pearl came out of me and said, I'm not taking them off. It was like, she, I said, what? And she said, I'm not taking this dress off. And I'm holding a conversation with myself. I said, of course you are. I said, we can't go. And so I went up to the Ice Palace and I remember talking to one of the, uh, one of the entertainers there. And I said, I'm going back into the city just like this. And he said, no, Pearl, you got to take it off because you could be beat up or you could be. I said, Pearl won't take, let me take the drag off. So I know they probably said, this child's been doing a little too many drugs. So I ran home, got my bag, got my stuff, and I got on the boat. It was the most surreal trip across the bay from Cherry Grove back to Sayville. And I'm on the way in and people are looking and, um, and I look just like what I am. And I go in and I remember walking through Penn Station and I'm in a flowing something <laughs> and people. And when I looked like in my wake, you know how you walk past somebody. And if you look back real quick in your wake, there's all these people staring like what? And I get on the subway and I catch the train on back down this way. Now it's getting ready to just throw everything out that I thought I was. A gay black man living with HIV. And now this new, new something has emerged that was peeking out all the time. Pearl was there. She didn't have a name, but she was there. Everything up to this point had led to me uh, being true to myself as a transgendered woman. And I, at that point, I had no idea what that meant. 
because for the next 16 years, it was, and it's still continue today, it's, it's been a journey. And I wouldn't trade it for the world.